All right, bottom feeders. Uh, I snuck out of work early. Finally hired an assistant manager so I could get out of there for once. So I thought I'd come out and see if I can get some flatheads today. Um, I've been at the spot a couple of my last videos. Hasn't been as great as it normally is, but uh, I'm gonna try again today here. Probably be a short film, it's already five o'clock, but we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. All right, bottom feeders. Fish number one, perfect size bait. I'm actually gonna probably throw this out there as a live bait, it's only about a palm size. See what happens, and then we'll keep fishing. So it's off to a good start, guys. Came in handy today. Bank fisherman's best friend. Good old Scott's teepee. Uh, I'm not sure if I had the mic set up. I gotta fish, I gotta fish. Fish on. It's drum season, folks, apparently. I'm gonna let this one go, because it's pretty big, and I don't really wanna use it for cut bait. He actually had both, he stole my crawler, and then came back and got another crawler. So, drum, do the drum, drum, drum. See ya, buddy. Hey guys, I uh, just wanna give you a couple tips. When you're fishing with crawlers, the best thing to do is check your bait every 15 minutes. If you don't get a bite in 15 minutes, You've either lost your bait and you didn't notice it, or your bait is somewhere that the fish can't find it. Um, even a couple foot difference can be a you know big difference from one fish to 20. And if you find a hot spot, make sure you keep casting to that spot. Unfortunately, I, I uh, decided to hook up that drum and throw it out. I didn't like my cast, it was a little short, I left it for 10 minutes and uh, reeled it in and he was already off of it. And the second drum I decided not to keep because it was too big. So now I gotta catch another piece of bait before it gets dark. Not sure what happened if it came off on the cast. It didn't look like it. Um, really good chance that something like a northern or a gar or a musky hit it and ripped it right off. Channel cat too, I suppose. But yeah, if you're fishing crawlers or bottom fishing, uh, you know, easy bait that comes off, leeches, crawlers, minnows, uh, anything besides like a cut bait, the best thing to do is, is to check it, you know, every 15, 20 minutes. A lot of times those fish can pull that crawler right off there and you don't even see it. Um, that's why you want to use circle hooks so that if they do um, do that and they pull a little tension, they'll set the hook themselves. Just with the tension of the rod and, you know, the weight of your sinker. So I'm just gonna, it's 5.30 right now. Again, the sun doesn't set till 9, 9.30, 9.30ish probably. It's the third longest day of the year right now. At least for us in Minnesota. A boat just pulled up on this point that I was at with Joe Kitts a couple videos ago. I bet a lot of people fish there. It seems like they park their boat there, have a fire, throw some rods in. Seems pretty cool. It's a long walk from here though, and I'm just gonna sit right here. This is the, my favorite spot on this bank, is right down the bottom of the hill. I also just noticed uh, up in the sun over here, there's a bunch of bait fish just sitting there. Um, so I got the wind blowing at me and it's not super windy it's like a south you know, southeast wind eight miles an hour which is perfect because it's actually pushing the bait fish to my bank which is good because then the big fish like to follow them. 
Again, I gotta get a piece of cup bait on here, like ASAP, so that I can uh, catch a real fish here. You know, just to be, at least be honest with you guys out there, my bottom feeders. It's ironically the slowest bank fishing year that I have had, probably since the last drought in 1998. I was very young and I just started fishing the bank, really. It's June 22nd, 23rd, 24th, something like that, and uh, I've caught one flathead. One channel cat. Three surgeon. Two really nice surgeon. One huge. One big. I have been trying a bunch of new spots because I got the kayak. I've been trying out new things, experimenting. But yeah, this, this is honestly, I've put in a lot of hours that you haven't seen. Nothing. There's been probably 23, 24, 25 hours of fishing that I have filmed. Not like continuous hours, but just time on the bank. Um, which I might compile into one video just to like you know reality is it, it, it takes three to five hours between big fish this this fishing this way and that's just an average because sometimes you catch four five six pound you know six fish over ten pounds in a day and most days you catch one to two to three my this year it's been like three to like 12 trips. And that's right, it's probably because the freaking camera's on and, and because I am experimenting, I'm trying new spots because I have the kayak. Um, some have turned out fantastic, the maiden voyage, that was fantastic. That trip with my dad and my daughter, Summer, great trip, lots of fish turtles whatever and I will say I've guided two times friends and family nothing nothing professional right and both times I put those people on their very first flathead ever they've never seen one before never caught one before and if I can take anything out of this part of the season so far the super hot early spawn waters too hot too fast season I'll take that. Maybe they would have never caught one if they didn't go fishing with me. And no, they weren't big. Hose was probably like four pounds and Uncle Larry's was probably like two pounds or a pound and a half. But they at least got to knock the species off their list. So that part I'm proud of. The rest of it... Honestly, it's kind of been a disappointment. Uh, just, just in the fact like I haven't caught a lot of fish. And I've put a lot of time in. By this time last year, I had six flatheads over 30 pounds. One over 40 by this time last year. And I literally caught those all in the month of June. You know, and then they went on the spawn in July. And I caught a you know, handful of smaller 8 to 12 pounders throughout the season, through into fall. <clears throat> And then since our government decided to start feeding us money to try to get us used to taking money from them, I took it as an advantage and bought a bunch of equipment to be able to try to do this. But really, like, the ultimate goal is, you know, if one person decides to fish like this and love it, I did, my, I did it. But really, I'd like to have thousands of people take up this type of fishing because it's really fun it's relaxing it's beautiful you spend time with God you spend time with the water the animals the mayflies the snakes everything right like it's just it's it's an experience you wouldn't believe the people that I've run into on the banks in the middle of nowhere middle of nowhere 
For all those that know the steps, Tashney's Landing, that's out in the middle of nowhere. You don't know how to get there. It's marked by a black mailbox. And you gotta drive through water that come inside the door to get there. It's some of the best catfishing I've ever done on north of Taylor's Falls on the St. Croix River. And I've had people come out there and just sit and chat with me for hours. Not even bugging me either, just hanging out. It's just amazing who you can meet on the river. Again, I forgot my cord, probably left it in Uncle Larry's boat. So I'm going to kill the camera for a little bit. Try to catch some bait. Once I get some bait, I'll flip it back on. Thanks for listening. All right, bottom feeders, pretty much the same news. Except for the last hour, I've only had one or two bites. I think I, I think I figured out what what's different this year is that usually these, these fish I use for bait, I can't keep them keep them off the lines. I can't. No matter what's out there, it doesn't matter if it's artificial crawler, minnow. I can't keep them off the line. This year, I, I can't catch them. I spend half my tonight fishing for a red horse sucker. Something that you usually catch non-stop on any river system. Usually you're trying to fight those off your line so you can catch something else. Not the case this year. Very strange. So, uh, if I don't get something by 7.30, I'm going to pull one of the rods in. And I'm going to take out old Trusty and put on like five night crawlers and just toss it out there. See what happens. Flatheads do like a big old bundle, so do sturgeon, so do carp, so do buffalo fish, just still have them caught. I give these two 10 more minutes and then one of them's gonna go away and the other one's gonna be old trusty's gonna come out. Ah. Whole sucker head going out. Here we come. The first rod here is getting hit. It's got a big old sucker head on it. It's just moving a little bit. There it goes, there it goes. Fish on. Oh, that's a good fish, you guys. I'm gonna make sure it's recording. Good fish. Oh my god, first fish on this rod too, guys. You gotta get him out of the rocks. Oh, oh that's a good fish. Head back off the drake. Baby, this is why you go and spend the time. This is a good fish. Oh, there he goes a little bit. Now he's gonna run. Good fish, guys. Oh, yes. He's way out there, but it looks like he's right down there. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. Oh, big fish. Big fish, guys. I've never caught one on this rod. This is my first one. Oh, I still haven't seen him. Oh, there he goes again, there he goes. Oh, still haven't seen him. Come on, baby. Oh, that's a good fish, guys. Oh. Yes, so 
Oh, he's barely hooked. He's barely hooked. Yes! Oh! It's not huge, guys, but this is such a good fish. This is such a good fish. Oh, camera left at him. Look at that, baby. Yeah. Oh, that felt so good. Oh, he just barely hit it, and I was on the phone. And he took it. There it is. The witching hour. I'm actually going to get some weight and measurement just because I'm curious on how much this weighs. Oh. Ah, yeah, baby. Oh, it's a good flatty. Oh, I got a bruise on my stomach from holding them. Hell yeah. All right. First things first, get the bait back out there. Oh. So strong. Man, look at him go. He's just kicking my butt. I don't know how people noodle, folks. I don't know. Y'all are crazy. All right. Thirty-three inches. I don't even know if this thing's gonna pick him up. Seventeen eleven. That's why I put the time in, folks. That's why I put the time in. This thing's gorgeous. Definitely probably a female that's already laid her eggs. She's going back in. Mwah. Beautiful fish, folks. Oh, boy. God love you. Take your time, girl. Let's get some of that mud off, yeah. You take your time, okay? I probably had you out too long. No, oh, you're not ready yet. Come on. Oh, there you go. Now you're waking up. Let's get some air going through those lungs for you. Not yet. Not yet, sweetheart. Nope. Now make sure you're good to go, okay? 
clean that mud off. Yeah, I can get some air going through them. I am such a lucky man. You're close. You're close, girl. You're close. Uh, not yet. I want you to kick my butt. I want you to kick my butt before I let you go. Okay? There you go. There she goes. Oh, it feels so good. Guys. You guys. Ah! I love those fish so much. I don't know what it is. Maybe I was one in my past life or something, but. See if we can get another one. Who knows, right? I love the spot. I love the spot. Hey, I'm, I'm my heart's still pounding from that fish. Whew. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'm quitting smoking, hacking up like crazy. Just in case I can't pick up any more fish. Uh, film the night. I am gonna stay for a little bit after that. I don't know if you can see it in the distance. There's a full moon, strawberry moon, they actually call it tonight. I'm pretty sure anyways. We're really close to the strawberry moon. But kids are at grandma's. I just caught a flathead and only number two of the year, but so I, <laughs> I'm not leaving yet. I got night vision on this camera. I've got some headlamps and stuff. But I gotta give it a little bit now. That was so fun. I'm sure I'll have a bruise tomorrow where the handle is dug into my stomach. And that was 17 pounds. I, the biggest one I caught was close to 40. And I'm starting to think now, just learning these things a little bit. I thought it was more like 45, but it's probably more like 38 to 42. But it was so big still. I could. It was still so big. And that thing fought and pulled and pulled. But I finally, finally, finally broke. I broke the skunk on that rod. Finally. <clears throat> it's definitely not the rod. It, it, it was perfect. Um, even though it's really stiff, it still didn't pull too hard to pull it out. It was only skin hooked. I was really lucky. Oh, those fish are so fun, guys. Those and sturgeon. Yeah. Musky, too. Musky fight like a freight train carp. But just something about the way the flathead just bears down. He doesn't try to sprint you to death. He just tries to go down and down and down and down. And he's trying to find anything to tangle himself up in. Sturgeon, as soon as they're hooked they start going upstream I don't know why but that's what they do they go upstream and they go like crazy like a freight train like a speed sprinter like Usain Bolt that's what a sturgeon is a flathead's more like a Greco-Roman wrestler Just pulling and pulling and pulling and just wearing you out and wearing you out and wearing you out. They fight like 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 Khabib. Man, that's fun. But yeah, uh, I really appreciate every watch and subscriptions are super helpful.
on my march to a thousand. I'm a long ways away, but hey, we're just starting out. And even though it's been what I would consider a slow season, I can I continue to put fish on the shore and it all starts with throwing a crawler out and being patient and catching your bait. Super exciting though, guys. Uh, yeah, just in case I don't get another one, Local Waters signing out, Bottom Feeders, I appreciate the uh, support. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you.